Hi Facebook friends, it's Sean Bishop of Bishop Instruments and Bows and my faithful dog Mop. Easy to see why he's called Mop. Um, today we're talking about W.E. Hill and Sons, the bow making dynasty. So W.E. Hill and Sons, founded by William Ebsworth Hill in about 1880, that's when the shop started. Um, they, he had four sons, he had Arthur, Alfred, William and Walter. And when they started off in 1860, just by himself, William Absworth. So first of all, sorry, changing tack here. He was the son of Henry Lockie Hill. Henry Lockie Hill was the son of Joseph Hill. So we're going back to the eight, early 18th century. The family were in the violin business for almost 300 years. So they started off uh, with the first bow maker, which was um, James Tubbs. And I've got a, a bow here by Tubbs. It's a viola bow made in about 1860 for Hills. So it's stamped uh, W.E. Hill, made by Tubbs in 1860. Often when he came across these bows later on in life, Tubbs would overstamp these bows with his own stamp. So that's a, that's a Hill bow made by Tubbs, 1860. When the shop opened, they started um, with the Hill bow makers, we all know Samuel Allen, um, followed by William Redford, Sidney Yeoman, Leeson Johnson, Watson in the 40s, uh, and Bultitude. So they were the well-known hill bow makers. But let's have a quick overview of what is a hill bow and what to look for. So if we grab one of my bows here, standard bow made in about 1920, uh, 1920, 1930, stamped H&S. So that's the lowest grade. That's why violin sort of uh, train spotting type people like myself love hills, because we have so many different elements to the bows different makers, and they're all marks available on the bow if you look. So this is their lowest grade, H&S, stamped H&S, and if we quickly take it off, is that right, Mop? Yeah. Um, and we look under, sometimes you'll find a number on the stick, which will tell you the date of the make, and they started doing that, I think, in about the 1920s. And then if you look underneath at the top plate, you can see a little mark. Um, this one doesn't have any mark, um, so it's harder to work out. But all the bow makers from the Hill, Hill Workshop had numbers or special marks they put on their bows. And uh, you can usually work out where they lie with that regards. So that's the standard H&S. We move on to the uh, a Hill stamp. So that's the next level of quality. And it goes on from there. So then we had w, some bows that had W.E. Hill and Sons. So WH and W E Hill and Sons, next level. And then we have different mounts. So we start off with the ebony frogs, then we go on to the ivory frogs, then we go on to tortoiseshell. Sorry, turtles out there. We have this is their top range bow, W E Hill and Sons, gold and tortoiseshell fleur de lis, the fleur de lis motif. Um, this bow was made in about 1920, 1930. We shoot to one of the greatest uh, bow makers, the last great bow maker, I think personally, of the hills, William Watson. So uh, sadly, William Bill, Bill Watson died uh, six months ago. Um, one of the greatest um, men to do bow making of the 20th century in the UK. Lovely chap, I knew him very well. You could hold a bow, a hill bow, 20 meters away from him, he'd tell you who made it. And this was one of the bows that he made with the, the uh, coronet, a nice crown there in gold, and tortoiseshell. Um, so that's it, Hill and Sons. A uh, quick overview, like I said, each bow should have a date potentially on it from 1920s onwards. Hill bow making from 1960 onwards falls away. I myself don't go for any hill bows from 1960 onwards, I don't touch them. Uh, but my first bow that I used professionally was a hill bow. I had good French bows, but my go-to bow on a day-to-day -day basis was a hill bow because they work and they're great value for money. Anyway, any questions, please post them under this and I'll answer them and I'll put a few photos of my hill bows that I have in my own collection. Stay safe. We'll see you in a few days time for another bow maker. Bye bye.